Hey everybody. I bet you weren't expecting this quite as early. Normally what I do is the first thing you tend to see of a new set is when I open the six boosters or however many it is. Uh, and that's what I did last time. I opened the boosters and then did a set musings a few days later. But I figured why not do the set musings for the new set as early as I can. And I've what I've been doing is monitoring Scryfall. These tabs with all the different things I want to talk about have been set up for a few days now. And I thought once this hits the magic number of 277, that means all the cards must be listed here. So or all the uh, or so-called in booster cards. So that was my trigger. So we're going to go with a set musings episode for Innistrad Midnight Haunt. Um, so obviously, spoiler alert, um, the set doesn't get it released on MTGO. I'm not sure when it goes out on there. I know the uh, the actual pre-release won't be for a couple of weeks now. So if you know if you like to be the the surprise of the set to be anything you do pre-release wise either physically in paper or digital and you'd like it to be a complete surprise then don't watch this video um, also if you like to watch my pack openings without seeing anything before I do the pack openings don't watch this video um, so the only the only downside for me is I'm going to see the cards before I do the pack openings but knowing my um my brain uh in the two weeks it's going to elapse between me doing this and me doing the pack openings i've probably forgotten half of it, or not, if not all of the cards so in some ways i wanted to just put this out there so that you you could choose which order you want to watch this in so if you want to watch this set musings episode go ahead it's up there um and if you want to wait until I open the packs, it's going to be about another couple of weeks before I get my hands on the packs. I'm, I might, you know, be able to get hold of some, um, what do you call it? Some uh, pre-release packs for the pre-release or around the time of the pre-release. Um, anyway, we'll see how we go. But I thought, you know, it'd be fun to do this. Now we're, we're up to this magic number. So what to look out for again, um, what you'll notice if you watch my regular set musings, we're probably not going to see so many cycles. I was trying to think of the best way to describe this um, and, and I probably would use the term slicing. So what we'll see is slices through the set and, you know, we'll have like a slice of werewolves or a slice of graveyard matters or a slice of coven so what i've done is i've gone into scryfall that's what i'm using here and obviously done an advanced search using certain keywords and if you don't use scryfall or you, you use scryfall definitely investigate using the keyword search is it's super powerful tool and yeah it's great fun just slicing through a set for want of a better word and that's what we're going to do. We're going to slice through this set. There's going to be some cycles. There's about six that are currently reported on in the MT on MTG Wiki, uh, which I currently have open in my other screen just down here. So it's out of the way. Just full reveal there because I can't do all this stuff from memory. And I'll go through and I just point out what how we're slicing this. So 277 cards. There's also 114 sort of special versions of the cards, which we'll, we'll just quickly jump through. So 277 in the boosters. We've got, at the moment, it says three borderless planeswalkers. Obviously, I'm more concerned with, with the booster contents. So this could well get updated on Scryfall. We've got, obviously, showcase cards in here again where they do this thing with a, a particular border for the set now obviously these are um versions if you like of 
cards that are already in here. In fact, if you, I'll do it in a moment actually, I'll show you how it works in Scryfall if you're interested. So there we have, you would also notice this style as well, which they've used on the lands. Here you can see and there's two of each for the um for the different colours of mana. Interesting when when we open when I open the regular boosters. I'm just gonna open regular boosters, that's the plan, nothing fancy. Is it interesting as well? I I had no idea this was coming. It's funny I, I switched ahead of the game over to just opening old fashioned uh, draft boosters is uh those what do they call them now bundles those bundles don't contain uh, draft boosters anymore i think they've got collector's boosters in them i'm old school i like the old draft boosters you can see the dual lands has this uh, alternate art borderless cards we've got the buy box promo there's the extended artwork cards where it runs over into the uh, into the area or the areas outside of the rules text and the names and it gives it that slightly raised look again here i'm just really trying to get uh, a feel for the the look of these cards i'm not going to dwell too long on the functionality yet then there's some additional promo cards where they have regular artwork land and a few other bits and bobs. Now my understanding is uh, the, these are, certainly these here, are what are in those special promo boosters which they give out as sort of prizes at events or other, other, other such things. So if I do this, um, where's it gone? Images. Is that because I've messed up here? <laughs> Hold on a moment. So I had one of these ready earlier and then I went and closed it annoyingly. That's better. Okay, yeah, do it like that. I just want to, yeah, that way it throws the sorting out. So you can see here that there's, it's, it's easier then to see where you've got multiple pieces of artwork if you if you get it to sort like that. So images sort by colour, it sort of destroys the um, the split. And then once you've done that, uh, you're sort of locked into it to a certain degree. So you can see, let's do that back by colour again. And then it's easier to see for which cards there are multiple versions of artwork. Anyway, it's just a quick overview. So our first slice is there's werewolves in the set you'll also notice here and 
I did it here. I think I did it with the trans to the transform slice. There's this you know day bound and night bound going on as well, and I've I've separated these out. Uh, there's individual slices searching on this. So at the moment, what I'm doing is this is a slice just based on uh, looking for the creature type of werewolf. So not surprisingly, werewolves are a thing, and you can see their presence is tends to be in in more colours than others, but they are across all colours here. It looks like you can see primarily they're in red and green, and certainly the two colour creatures, including a legend here, are also in red and green. Now you'll notice that oh, we we'll, we'll use this as an example. We'll come back to this in in other slices. You've got day bound and uh, night bound. I'm not going to get too bogged down in in the specifics of the mechanic because this is more of just trying to show you what percentage of the set is you know leans in what direction. But you can see here it says if a player casts no spells during their own turn, it becomes night next turn. If we flip that over, there's a night bound on the other side. If a player casts at least two spells during their own turn, it becomes day. It becomes day next turn. Now the thing about this is this day bound and night bound not only affects the card, it, but it just affects all cards. So it's you know it's across the board. So when if it, if some if it it goes to day, um, sorry if it goes to night and it's on day, then you flip it. And if it goes to day and it's on night, then you flip it the other way and so on and of course that's happening everywhere and we'll come on in a moment to cards that specifically also have transform on them as well but there's this day bound and night bound ability on here and the way you monitor that is through how many spells or lack of spells have been cast during a player's turn like I said, this is a cross the board ability. It's not just a, a, you know, the player that's casting or not casting the spell. Oops. It's any player. So yeah, basically symmetrical. We have humans in the set, and you can see white blue, black, red, green, so it's across all the colours. And some of these are also werewolves as well. There's a few here which don't mention specifically day bound or nap bound. But do mention uh, this ability called Disturb, where you may cast this card from its dis from your graveyard, transformed for its Disturb cost. And uh, that's why it's so important. I'll, like I said, I'll post the link to all the different abilities on here because there's it's quite important that people understand. You know the relationship between say disturb and day bound and night bound and transform and day bound and night bound and all those things and and that's beyond the scope of what I'm going to attempt to try and describe here um, there's a, a um, the link I'll include and include videos um, that wizards have, have produced which go into to details on on how this all works That was just our human card. So I'm really looking at the more tribal aspects at the moment. So spirits in the set as well. Again, some of these may have disturbs, disturb costs on them. And when we come to look at the disturb cards as a whole, I'll, I'll go through that. And you can see some don't. Plus again, with this, it's, a, it's sort of an indicator 
here you can see in in this set clearly was it blue white is spirits even though there are spirits in other colors so they've deviated a little bit in in this in this thread from locking it in to the to whatever the colors were like they'd done previously with the Innistrad sets in fact this one oh there is kid how did i sort this oh it is by color oh, zombies okay yep yeah, no surprise there and again you can see sort of indicate well here's here's a bit of a deviation but um blue black zombies and we're in blue and black however there is a uh, black green zombie a zombie bear so four three for four uh, with trample and enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each creature that died this turn and the other thing i'll do you'll notice uh there's some creatures here which are often referred to i think as draft indicators or archetype indicators we'll we'll take a look an individual look at those but at this point i just want to give you some rough idea of you know the tribal aspect the, the you know the amount of cards to expect so we've got 13 zombies 20 spirits 81 humans and 19 werewolves but some of these are going to double up because there's obviously human werewolves as well i don't think there's any spirit werewolves i could be wrong or come to think of it zombie spirit werewolves there's a human wizard that turns into a zombie and there's our vampires so you know, again compare it to the other thread in other inner thread sets uh, black red and so they've kept it in here so all of our zombie um, all of our vampires are in black and red we've got there's no transforms i don't think and no day night shenanigans nope Yeah, we'll come on to the legendaries as well. That's an interesting cycle. So, so nineteen cards have transform on them. And again, this is more of a slice. There's no at this level. There's no real sort of cycles. Uh, we'll get onto individual cycles in a moment. You'll see, there's certain things that do come through when we look at cycles so with this one for instance <clears throat> and also i've it was, with this you'll see that there's a couple of things going on here we've got coven or coven however you want to say that uh, which i'll look at we've also got the transform in here as well trying to find one here that just has transform yeah so this is fairly straightforward to tap draw a card transform mysterious tome and it transforms into chilling chronicle one and then tap tap target non land permanent transform chilling chronicle and it goes back so i think Yeah, it's got a May on it. I'm just seeing how these transform backwards and forwards. So that's day and night, but it also has the additional ability here. As this permanent transforms into Curse of Leeches, attach it to a player. Okay. Wow, well, so quite a bit going on here when you start looking at it from this point of view. look at mystic skull so 
two to cast, one tap, add one matter of any color, five tap, transform it. Where's it going to? It goes to Mystic Monastery. Monstrosity. Mystic Monstrosity. Lands you control have tap, add one matter of any color. Oh, and this one can transform through the use of soul counters. Yeah, so we've got lots of quite different transform triggers all over the place. Yeah, you're going to definitely need those links to those videos. It's not a... There's a lot of stuff going on in this set. We've got a mill card here. Will that transform to? Oh yeah, we already had a look at this actually. So. <laughs> so is blue, black, green a mill? Do we have a mill deck in here? Don't keep mill a card. Oh, self mill. I've got some self mill here. Right. Oh, here. Yeah, this is. Oh, this is what I want to look at. His cards are mentioned in the graveyard. So yeah, that so that does make sense actually because we've got this disturb ability on here. So clearly, uh, there are reasons why you might want stuff in your graveyard. We've got cards I mentioned graveyard all over the shop actually. Okay, here we go. So now we're going to look at actual specific things. So we got Coven, or Coven. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control three or more creatures with different powers, target creature you control gains double strike until end of turn. And you'll notice that all of these, regardless of variations in what they do, It's all revolves around having three or more creatures with different powers. And it's pretty important because this, depending on the card, uh, this will check. Depending on whether it's, uh, where is it? We've got a static or a triggered ability. But yeah, this this sort of, three or different powers gets checked at a couple of points and it's it's obviously that's important because it would be possible to um buy an opponent or some action some board action this this state to change between when you cast the spell and when it resolves so you could start off with three or more creatures with different powers at certain points and again it, it is different depending on whether you know there's a static ability here or um, what else might be going on and um, and it's activated abilities between when you cast the spell and when the spell resolves or when you activate the ability and that ability finally resolves. So if the uh, this count changes for some reason, like there's no longer three or more creatures with different powers, then the spell doesn't happen. 
or the the uh, activated ability doesn't happen. But again, I'll include the link that has all that describing that video but better than I've just done. But you get the picture is that just be mindful with this on these different cards when you compare it against uh, activated ability, static ability or whether it's stapled to an instant. Uh, there are certain in other things that could happen which might affect this conditional here. And you can see it's always always three or more, but what it does is is different on different cards. We got anything in? Seems to be a yeah. So it definitely looks like a white and green thing, Coven. So that's a peculiarity of white and green cards. And I just got it to look for anything that cares about graveyards. Did I? We've done this twice. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that was an accident there. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So here's all of our our day bound side cards. So I did it. Did a you know slice <laughs> through the set um, by searching on day bound in the Oracle text. So we've seen before what basically caused this to flip here and then over what I've done here as so you can see the night bound side if I flip all of these and I reloaded this because I was worried that um, obviously because I put this together a couple of days ago it could have changed And there they are, all the night bound. And again, that night bound trigger is, is all the same on any card that has night bound on it. Obviously, there's going to be other things in here which might also trigger as a result of, of things happening. We've all, you'll also notice a few other things in here. We've got Ward. Uh, where are we? And we're going to see what I haven't done is I haven't focused on any um, any ability that might just be specific. Uh, that, oh, sorry, any ability or keyword that isn't specific to this set. So we're going to see other things coming up that we've seen before. So there's Ward. So Ward 3, whenever this creature becomes a target of a spell or ability, an opponent controls, counter it unless that player pays 3. Now I haven't looked through this to see how many Ward cards are. That's the first one I've noticed. Oh, there's one up there actually. So here's Disturb. You may cast this card from your graveyard. Transformed if it's for its disturbed cost. So these are all cards that you know, benefit uh, from being in the graveyard or can benefit from being in the graveyard. You'll see some are also transformed, but Others just mention or care about Disturb. So those are the ones that don't. Because obviously if they've got Disturb on here and it's all act, they're all activated abilities, all stapled to creatures. But you'll see there's a few spells here and creatures which don't transform but do reference Disturb in some way. So whenever you disturb a spirit card, 
or a card with disturb put a plus one plus one counter on shipwreck sifters so you see a few cards like that there's even um, this is incredibly specific removal exile target spirit creature with disturb or enchantment so there's a way of getting rid of disturb cards makes makes um yeah, makes good sense in the set In fact, I never thought to look for that generally, you know, when we're now, we're now in the world, the world of standalone sets. Um, I've never really thought to notice how niche some of the spells might become as a result for dealing with certain things. Oh, here's Decayed. So what does that do? Falcon Abomination. Two and a blue, two two, creature zombie bird with flying. When Falcon, Falcon Abomination enters the battlefield, create a two two black zombie creature token with decayed. It can't block. When it attacks, sacrifice it at end of combat. Okay, so that's all good stuff here. Yeah. So you're going to see some things as well with like mixed. Obviously, yeah, a couple of abilities. So we've got flashback as well here, which is is I think yeah heavily heavily enough uh, referenced in the set that it does get a mention in the uh, MTG wiki article. That's obviously an ability that we've seen before, but um, in a in a graveyard set, it, it's a pretty critical thing to be in here. So there's a much bigger implication, I suppose, that's what I'm getting at, for it in this sort of set. So that's our decayed cards, and you can see what's happening here is we've got a number of instants that actually create tokens with uh, decayed on them. There's another one here. And then we've got enchantments that are spitting out Two two black zombie creature tokens with decayed as well. Oh, creatures all do them as well. So we've got creatures spitting out two two black zombie creature tokens. So obviously, two two black zombie creature tokens are going to be a token that we're going to see in the set, hopefully. Oh, his flashback, yep. So white, blue, black, red, green, multicolored. It's quite a lot of, yeah. And from what I remember, I'll go back to these. There is a cycle of these as well. And there's a whole mixture on here of stuff with flashback on it. And stuff that cares about flashback as well. Although, obviously, what we're going to see is the creatures that reference flashback would surely be ones that sort of care about it in some way. Uh, because you can't really flashback a creature. It's only instants and sorceries. Yes, yes. Oh. So now we move on to specific cycles. There's actually a cycle of cards with, I say a cycle, sorry, scratch that, jumping ahead of myself. There's um, a fairly limited amount of cards. That's a better word I'm looking for. There's a limited amount of cards because these aren't, there isn't a cycle here actually. There's, I've mislooked <laughs> because you'll see there's a there's no red card uh, but um, we have four five cards so four mono color one two color cards with investigate on them so with investigate just to refresh your memory you create a colorless clue artifact token with two sacrifices artifact draw a card 
and this is because it has a little flip side there so there's a an investigate there with the clue token generation going on ah that's yeah now we get to it so cycle of adversary cards all at mythic trepid adversary spectral tainted bloodthirsty primal So they have multi-kicker-esque abilities. Each kicker payment gives them a counter. That gives them plus one, plus one, and another scaling effect. So we've got, well, this is cool as well. Each one of these has a sort of ability that's attributed to that color. So white one's got lifelink, blue has flash, black's death touch, red's haste, and green is trample. All these triggered on are these ETBs? Yeah, they are. So when an intrepid adversary enters the battlefield, you may pay one and a white. So yeah, kicker esque. Any number of times. When you pay this cost one or more times, put that many valor counters on intrepid intrepid adversary. I guess plus one plus one for each. Oh, Creatures you can draw get plus one plus one for each valor counter. That puts one plus one plus one counters on on here, and then to that many other target artifact creatures and or enchantments phase out. Oh, it's phasing in here! Wow. Okay. Now we got. Two, two black zombie creature tokens make an appearance again with decayed so it's using plus one plus one counters most of these to then be used as a resource or yeah to then be used as a way of what's that yeah utilizing or referencing that number that many counters except for this one in that it sort of converts they they start off of as valor counters and then they're just used as keeping tabs on the number of plus one plus one count count uh, plus one plus sorry the number of times you get plus one plus one on your creatures yeah that's right Ooh, cycle of lands so they enter the battlefield unless you control the tapped unless you control two or more other lands so they're all in uh, they're in the five allied colors white blue which is the desert deserted beach blue black shipwrecked marsh black red haunted ridge red green rock fall veil and green white overgrown farmland yeah here's all our flashback stuff you can see in here i deliberately screened out the um the creatures so what I wanted to primarily show you here is that, oh, by the way, those the previous ones here were referred to apparently as haunt lands, I think that's the term. The reason why I did have filter on flashback, we'd looked at flashback before, and there's this particular filter, is just to show you in within the flashbacks there is this cycle of rare flashback spells and non-creature spells and you can see there's 10 of them so one for each of the two color combinations including so that's both allied and enemy colors
So there's also a full cycle of, or double cycles, I think they call them sometimes, of rare legends uh, in two in two colours. Fat, we seem to have got slightly extra here as well. Oh yeah, I see what the oh no. Interesting. I'm just looking here to see, got a little bit of doubling up going on here actually. So that's not super strict, it looks like we've got at least one in, yeah, at least one in each of the colours. Oh, um, sorry, misread, don't worry. <laughs> Maybe no, we have just one of in there. So I was looking at these and getting a little. No, that, that is right. Interesting. No, I'm confusing myself here. That's easy to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, eleven. So we've got. Yeah, I know I was right. I should go with what I said originally. <laughs> confusing myself. So yeah, here we've got. Um, in green white we've got we've got two but again what I wanted to do here is just show you as well like the, the amount of legends in the set so not only do we have legends where there's at least one in each of the two colors the two pop you know two all the possible color combinations for two color, uh, but there's also there's no red one actually. That's interesting. Hmm. There's um uncommon flashback spells again. Yeah. You can see oh that's that snuck in I didn't um didn't uh, didn't quite screen this correctly so yeah so we've got a plant horror amongst all of this And you can see there's a cycle of 10 non-creature spells. Ignore that fella there. Root Call Creeper's not really there. Well, I should have done. I think this is how you do it. Let's try this on the fly. Where's that? Is that right? Yeah, there we go. Yep, that's how you do it. So yeah, if you do minus T creature, that it, it excludes the type of creature. Obviously here, I haven't filtered out the uh, the monocolored ones. Yeah, so I cycle there, and. Just scroll through all of these. This is just the creatures, but down the bottom here, this bottom ten, 10 here, these are these signpost creatures. So they used as um, as a way of indicating a certain draft archetype. Archetype. So 
white blue one yeah mill graveyard matters we got zombies blue black black red Yeah, cares about the vampires. So it looks as well, you're going to see a mix between uh, draft archetypes based around tribes and draft archetypes based around certain abilities or things like that. So it looks like you know, red green is this day bound, night bound stuff, but also with being in red green, uh, it's werewolves, which yeah, all the werewolves are. You know, have day bound, night bound on them anyway. Dawnheart Wardens. Yeah, green, white. I think I mentioned that was Coven. White, black, flesh taken. What's that one? Yeah, second creatures. Blue, red, instance and sorceries matter. Black, green. It's counters. For each creature that died. Yeah, this was this sort of odd one out in the um, when we were looking at the colours where there were zombies. Sunrise Cavalier. If it's neither day nor night. So yeah, when you first start the game, it will be neither day nor night until something triggers to the court. To cause this day bound or night bound, but it should go. It should always go day first. I think it's generally why it should go. But you'll see in the video that Wizards released that um, they describe certain you know things that may or may not happen. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, put a plus one bonus on gander on target creature control. That's going to be interesting. You've got red and white that cares about day night stuff. Root call creeper. It's flashback. Cool. Yeah, this didn't go too well. Um, so I found out the other day actually if you use Scryfall, uh, certain cards get tagged. I think it must be done manually and with sets that have been in for a while like this worked really well when I tried it on some of the earlier set musing sets when I was experimenting with it if you put in uh, function removal it'll actually show you removal cards here I, it doesn't look like there's got to be more removal than this but it doesn't look like uh, that tagging that manual tagging has happened quite yet but yeah that's something useful in here that you can do okay so back to the set as a whole so 277 cards just scrolling through slowly because we got we've gone through all the cycles and the different slices looking at tribal and the different abilities so let's just take a quick look and see what pops out so we think we've got stuff kicking out tokens not just as of those zombie tokens we saw earlier. You'll see a lot of echoes in here of stuff you've previously seen in Innistrad set, you know, the plane of Innistrad stuff. Got investigation going on. I didn't look to see often in sets, I don't know how much this happens, but if you remember, you know, you always get the odd alternative wind condition cropping up. I'm not sure if they do that in every single set now. Oh, unruly mobs in here. We're going to see some reprints as well from the other Innistrad sets. Oh, then we've got destroy all creatures, so we've got a bit of white board sweeping going on. I'm assuming somewhere we've got instant speed removal dealing with attacking creatures which is normally a thing you see in white. Do 
Oh, I see it. There's a few flash things going on. Oh, tap down. Oh, there's Podrick being mentioned here. Those that watch my videos a lot will know the significance of Roderick. It's always the, the commander or the uh, legendary that I always forget the name of. Oh, there we go. Destroy target creature with toughness four or greater. Well, that was that real sort of quite niche thing. Plus enchantments. More enchantments. I don't know how much we've we've seen a little bit of self mill here. I don't know how much of that we actually see across the set as a whole. Obviously, it makes sense with a lot of the cards here, flashback, and a few other things that we've got ways of getting stuff into our graveyard if we want. Where's our instant speed blue? Oh, there we go. Counter spell. Bounce. Dissipates anything. I think I've made this point before with, you know, the sets now where it's standalone. Obviously, for in terms of drafting, you've really they've really got to make sure they've covered all the bases in the set. They can't rely on you know if you're drafting say a later set where it's like large, large, small, or large and too small. Um, obviously, what you could do is you could um, rely on a lot of your removal and utility. It's probably a better word coming from the larger set because it that everything's in a single set then obviously that you've got to make sure that uh, there's there's stuff in here that uh, you know can do removal and uh, you know squeeze all that stuff in there and look destroy target creature without flying cool death touch enabler i'm looking to see if there's just an out and out destruction spell in so power two or less. Oh, there we go. Yeah, infernal grasp. Destroy target creature. Use lose two life. So uncommon. So is there a? What's the closest thing we've got to destruction in blue in common? A discard. So yeah. Creatures without flying. Is that um, common? And lots of modal stuff going on as well. I hadn't noticed that before. In a menace. Oh, here we go. This minus 13. Min yeah, so. Target creature is minus 2, minus 2, and end of turn. If it's night, that creature gets minus 13, minus 13 instead. Till end of turn. That's a that's a common. Moving on to red. What have we got in terms of burn? So four, four in a red, five damage, two damage to that creature controller. So what's that? Is that a twist on lava racks? We got any uh oh, what's that? Two two enchantment pump. 
looking to see if we've got any like three damage stuff in red if we see a few instant speed um, combat tricks interesting modality on that one actually It's creating elemental tokens. Oh, yeah, there we go. Gold. Gain control until end of turn. That's a red thing. One damage spell. Oh, there we go. Ooh, two and a red for three damage. This spell costs two less to cast if it's night so a single red for three if it's the night time so it's looking green as we've seen already coven is in green and white so we've got some spiders plus one plus one stuff oh and fight as well Oh no, that's actually I'm wrong. It's just one one sided. So target creature you control gets plus one plus one until end of turn. It deals tar damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. That's pretty cool actually. Does that turn a green? Mm. Yeah, we've got some self mill going on here in green. Oh, plus two, plus two for two. Oops. And you get to draw a card if you uh, trigger the coven ability. Death touch. Plummets in here. Bit of modal stuff going on deal with artifacts, enchantments or getting or exiling stuff from the graveyard. That's a useful card. I mean just generally. Oh, token creation. It's a green thing. Oh here we go, unnatural growth. Wow. Heavy investment in green there. One, four green. Charm at the beginning of each combat. Double the power and toughness of each creature you control until end of turn. And then we have our multicolored cards. I didn't specifically look at the planeswalkers actually, so I got. Ren and seven, three and two, two green. Wow. So five loyalty with four abilities. And one of which is an ultimate emblem. All in the packs hope, four loyalty with two. It also transforms. Well, say so transform, sorry. Goes from day bound to night bound. Oh my god. Looking to see. Yeah, so Tarifi is here. So, was that three, three planeswalkers? And then we got some artifacts. See what we've got here. I'm always curious as to what mana rocks there might be. The Celstus, Celstus, is that? 
tap in one layer of any color. That's pretty much good. There's a lot going on there. Now we've got a jack o' lantern, mystic skull. So there's quite a bit of mana fixing going on here with the artifacts. Unfortunately, of course, it looks like that all are fixing through lands. I say all, oh, actually, that's not strictly true. Um, but all the dual lands are a higher rarity. But we do have good old evolving walls and look, different artwork. What's that hostile? Still creeping in. Oh, phasing. So there is a bit of phasing in the set. It's interesting to see that. And then I think I've mentioned it. You've always seen these. These uh, lovely lands. Oh, and yeah, here's our borderless planeswalker card. So yeah, there's three planeswalkers in the set. Cool. And then... So here all I've done is I've just brought up currently, and of course the set's not been released in paper yet, but I just thought it'd be interesting to bring it up. So this is in order of price. So it looks like the pre-order price is... It, it's Renan 7 that is uh, taking the lead at the moment. And if I just reorganise this, let's just do that. So to to fear is you know I always like to see where that where it sort of gets down to ten bucks to threshold. Obviously the prices here may be a little bit elevated. It's difficult to tell. And obviously we've got these both in you know regular and alternate artwork. So obviously the uh, and the one's got three different pieces of artwork. It's always good this view because it's a lot easier to see the different so is Moonvale region our first oh no I was just looking to see what what's our like first regular artwork card which is still over 10 bucks. Because that's interesting to see, like, you know, what cards are up there because they're, you know, the, the, the price is high on the alternate artwork. And what cards, if you, if you ignore those, um, what sort of gets in purely on the merits of the card. So it looks like maybe this one's at 17 bucks. Yeah, because our, our regular Moonvale region is 16. Let's see what point we drop below 10, so we've got quite, quite a lot here. Wow, there's a lot of stuff above that threshold. Trouble is, it gets tif difficult to follow it with um, with these different artwork. Yeah, like here, you've got the regular ones, four four bucks, just well, four to five bucks. One's eleven. Oh, primal adversary. So yeah, it does look its face, and uh, no surprise to see it's the <coughs> the alt artwork stuff. That's um. You know, in those higher price slots, basically. Okay, cool. And then finally, and it's a bit early at this point because I suppose there's not a lot of stuff getting listed on EDH Direct, but yeah, no surprise. Evolving Worlds is in the set. So we'll, uh, yeah, that's high up. This Return to Nature, this is the card I looked at. And yeah, it's, it's, I, th I thought I'd seen this before. I just don't, didn't remember the artwork. 
Um, yeah, so that, that you can see would be a really useful modal spell in the in green in Commander. Field of Ruin that's been reprinted a few times. So, so I don't think, I'm not going to go through all of these, but my guess at this point in time most of the ones that are high up on the list are going to be, yeah, reprints. Oh, that isn't. Infernal Grasp. Okay, so I think I'm going to close it off there. I hope you found this useful. Like I said, um, well, I said at the top of the video, if you're not, if you stop watching it now, it's a bit too late. But, um, Hopefully, if you didn't want the, the set spoiled, then you didn't watch all the way through. Um, but uh, I thought I'd do this as an experiment, just do my set musings before I actually open any packs and just see how it goes. And like I said, I'm, hopefully I'm going to forget most of this by the time I open the pack. So it's still going to be fairly fresh, fairly new to me. But I suppose it does help as well because I, I this, at least this way, I'll know a little bit about the mechanics more when I actually open some packs for real so thanks once again for watching um one final thing i will say uh, i try not to plug my other stuff too much but if you haven't done already i do ha currently have a music podcast on spotify so probably not a lot of good unless you have spotify um thanks to all the people that are already tuning into it obviously they must have come across from from here from a previous video i i did the uh, podcast is called Music the Obsession and I'm probably up to about the, what, the fifth episode now. I'm going into, I'm going like five years at a time from about 64, 65 up to present day. And then once I've gone through all of that, I'm going to start looking at sort of individual genres and bands and other interesting things to do with, with music. But having on Spotify, the advantage is I get to actually play the music I'm talking about, which is super cool. So it's almost like having my own, uh, you know, being a DJ on the radio, which is cool. So anyway, thanks again for watching and bye for now.